Welcome, everyone. We are so lucky to have Leota Smith with us here today for part of our Ghost Light. Hi, Leo. <laughs> um, our Ghost Light interviews of alumni from Red Rocks. Um, thanks so much for doing this, and um, thanks for offering up new work for us this summer, also. It's good. It's good. Yeah. I'm glad to do it. Yeah, it's awesome. We're, we're bringing together some alumni. Um, for this piece. So um, do you want to tell us first, like uh, you were one of our rising star uh, Red Rocks students who did a lot of performing and a lot of writing um, when you were here at Red Rocks. Um, where'd you go after Red Rocks? Um, I've just been doing like short stints, like intensives at a few places. I took some classes at HB Studio, which is a very nice place. Cool. Uh, learning from this one teacher named uh, David Devlinger, like he's done a bunch of stuff on different shows. Um, like the most recent I'm familiar with was that he did like this part on like Godfather of Harlem. Wow. Um, nice. Then, yeah, yeah, I did an intensive with like the Labyrinth Theater on just like creating work and just kind of like like a solo kind of creating work thing for wow. both yourself as an artist and other people. Like it was a mix of an acting writing intensive sort of. Uh -huh. And then um, I took this small workshop with Lloyd Williamson. Nice. That's what was that like? Oh, dude, it, it was wonderful. Like uh -huh. he is a very wonderful teacher. Really? Yeah. The first time I think I was in this workshop, I had a moment where I think he paused and I was like worried for a minute that I was like messing up something. So I was like, oh crap, is he pausing? Is he looking at me because I'm like messing around or something? Am I, <laughs> do I have something wrong? Like, is someone else doing something wrong? Like, what's going on? And then I was like, oh, oh no, it's, that's just some thinking. And okay. All right. Huh. That, that's, some, that's new. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but the, the man is very brilliant. <laughs> wow. So that's so you're in New York City now, right? Yeah. Uh, um, so you, you're just taking advantage of, like, there's so many opportunities there to pick up skills, right? In, in yeah. In really ad hoc ways, huh? Yeah. It, it's, it's definitely a lot of, there are people if you want them. <laughs> nice. There are people you can learn from that are willing to show you new stuff. There's like always somebody, and it's just a matter of finding those people who are willing to be like, hey, yeah, this is a like new area. Mm -hmm. um, here's a place you can rehearse for like real cheap. Nice. Like, it's a matter of finding those people because that's not everybody, like everyone's not that resourceful. So when you find those people, it's like maintain be friends with that person. Yeah, keep those <laughs> relationships, yeah. Because resources, while there are plenty, like it's yeah. hard to have a starting list of like where to find them. Right. If being resourceful isn't your thing. Yeah. I, yeah, it's I a good thing be, it's yours. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much like a data collector, so I'm just like, okay, yeah. what, oh, this is a resource? This is a resource for resources? Yes. <laughs> right. Let me collect eight of those. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you've got the, um, we were talking right before uh, we started this, you said that um, you've got a lot of easy access where you're living right now in New York, just to be able to walk places during the pandemic and all that. To, yeah. Yeah, so that that's nice, being in a more uh, condensed place where you can get stuff and you can get to places easier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's crowded. That's like one of those kind of obvious things where yeah. it's like, oh, it's crowded and some areas are like real small and condensed. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, those are like tiny obstacles I can work around. Yeah. Was work that an adjustment? Those. Was that an adjustment um, moving from Colorado or not too bad? For, yeah, for me, not really. Uh -huh. um, it's because I grew up on this side of the country for like a small period of time. Oh, I yeah. lived not in this city, but I lived in Detroit, which is somewhat like 
more intense, but in a different way. Yeah. And I got used to doing most of my walking when I was a kid in Detroit because I walked everywhere at that point. Yeah. So it's like this weird feeling of, oh, this, this is a lot easier to do than yeah. I was expecting it to be. Yeah, absolutely. The accessibility, I remember that too. And I wish I would have had a Fitbit when I was living in New York because you walk everywhere. You're right. Like you, you just walk and walk and walk. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I lost like 10 pounds in like <laughs> my first four months of living here. I bet. Like, like, hey. <laughs> so you, you had also mentioned um, you have something coming up. Is it today or tomorrow? Um, tomorrow. You're working on. Tomorrow? What's that? Well, um, it's like this reading of an excerpt of something I wrote like last year. Great. Um, titled like The Substitute basically and it's this whole chalkboard it's this whole scene at a school where like because initially the way I got that idea was um listening to a story and it was something where like Michelle Rodriguez was all like oh well Liam Neeson can't be racist because he kissed Viola Davis <laughs> he kissed Viola Davis and like widows with tongue and everything and I was like <laughs> Like, oh, people go through to learn these responses like and I just started making this joke like over and over in my head and just adding all these things to it like oh well, surely you can't be racist because mathematically you see like if like not being racist means saying I'm not racist then like <laughs> then nobody I'm is saying you're not racist and if like not being racist equals having a black friend and having a black friend equals not being racist, then saying I'm not racist equals not <laughs> being racist. It just became a stupid math problem in my head of like, this is like racist math right here. <laughs> and then I had to look up that joke and then it became this whole layered joke. And then I was like, I gotta write this. I gotta do something with this. And yeah. like, oh, that's I've gonna had be it, awesome. Yeah, I've had it sitting on my laptop for like, a year just kind of kind of be like I should do something with this and I'm like well I guess now's a good time to yeah pass it somewhere <laughs> right right exactly exactly like um so uh talking about uh you also wrote a piece for us this summer um and uh that's going we're going yeah. to live stream starting on Thursday night right on uh, at seven o'clock Thursday Friday and Saturday night and both you and Sean Dale are in this one. Is that right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So tell me about this. I, w I was joking. It was like, wow, what was your inspiration for this piece? Because of everything going on in the world right now. It's a little obvious. <laughs> but you want to tell us more about um, how this one came to be? Um, this one came to be officially because... Initially, I was not doing anything in quarantine. I was just kind of like, all right, go for my walks. I'm just going to stay off of Zoom. Like, yeah. I'll like watch stuff, listen to stuff. But participation wise, I'm just going to like wait until everything's going to, then I'll do stuff in person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm just going to chill. And then, like, events happen. <laughs> Right. And Memorial Day weekend happened, and right. I was like, I was like, oh my god, that's four in one weekend. That's, yeah. that's like too much. That's, yeah. Uh. <laughs> right. You have to write up, write it out, and then to, yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, I have to do something. I have to now process all of this and think about all of this now because I'm like, I can't not do anything like I have been doing that's not gonna eat at me for at least some time. Right. And so then it was just like I wrote this and I was starting to write it. And then it was the lockdowns that happened, like the curfews. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. But then at some point my brain became like, well, at what point would this be really difficult for someone because I have to imagine that it's one thing if it's difficult in the 
perspective of this, but what if you are, I can only imagine if you are attached to this and you are one of the black cops doing this. Yeah. And like you and maybe you have a sibling and they're somewhere on the opposite side of this protest. And like, what happens if you're one of those people that are where it is a pull where it is like you and your siblings on the other side of this Mm -hmm. and then like this story came about and the odd thing is like what i've noticed since actually writing this is i've seen a few different articles just about articles pieces posts whatever it is Mm -hmm. about just like the profiles of black cops who were both on this side and who are sympathetic to the protest, but who are also juggling getting like all manner of like issues and problems also from the very police departments they work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, my uncle was a police officer at one point and he quit about a month in because it like, I believe like he quit a month in because just the corruption was too much for him. Uh-huh. And my uncle was in the Navy. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> like, like he was in the Navy, like he was in military school and then I think he was in the Navy and it was just like, oh, well, I mean, yeah. you were in the Navy. <laughs> and it's that bad, yeah, that you didn't want to stay in the, yeah. Yeah, and it, it is bad for you. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> that, that is an awful lot to take in. I mean, I, I really think that this um, this piece that you wrote, it's short, but you pack in a lot of, you know, stuff like, what would that be like? You know, what would that be like if you had a brother on the other side of, uh, of the line? And, and what's the conversation that you work through? And um, it's a lot in a, you know, 10 minutes or however long it is. Um, How's it been working with Sean Dale again? Oh, Sean is great. Sean is great. Like, he pretty much, right now, he's, I'm the, right, I'm the writer person uh-huh. and the actor person. He's the director person and the actor person. Yeah. And he has all this knowledge that I do not have. <laughs> yeah, well, he and just finished grad so school, too. So with the two of you going together creatively, it would be really cool. Yeah, he just. He brings, like, all of this knowledge that, like, I have not seen before. Hell, that I (laughs) haven't seen even with working with people, like, in New York. And, you know, every director is different. And every director brings, like, their type of energy. And Mm -hmm. I've had some directors where it's, like, they're great. They're inspired. They are just insanely inspired. And Mm -hmm. some that are not. But Sean is definitely among the insanely inspired. Where it's, like... Nice. Like, yes. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait to see it. Um, I'll be in on the dress rehearsal on Wednesday, so I get a sneak peek ahead of time. But, um, but yeah, just the just having you two working together again, two crazy creative people, is just going to be. Just can't wait to see it. Uh, um, so uh, I think one of the other questions I had for you, total switch here, is um, yeah. what's your What's your dream for like dream goals for the next five years or so? It's a weird time to be thinking about that in pandemic land, but. No, I get you. Um, I mean, one of my dream goals is to like produce one play, get invited to the Tonys yeah. or the OBs. <laughs> all right. I don't have to win or anything. I just want to be invited to all the nomination parties. And yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm just trying to go for the free food. Free you food. You know, I just want to be there getting some cocktail shrimps or some food <laughs> that I didn't buy and or bake. <laughs> yeah, that would be fabulous. Well, you don't have to vote for me or anything. I'm just here for food. But hey, while we're at it, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, you know, making a few connections. Yeah, That's like, a good goal to, to him. <laughs> I don't have to win or anything. I just want to be able to see it live and to go to all the parties. Right. I like it. That's an awesome goal. 
Um, and like, what, what advice would you have to students who are just starting out? You know, we've got a lot of new students at Red Rocks now in the theater department and dance department. Um, you know what that was like uh, oh, yeah. when you were trying to decide what you wanted to do. What would you tell them? Um, like, learn as much as you can, absorb as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, definitely make sure you have a life outside of it. <laughs> Yeah. Like, make sure you can figure out having a life outside of it because so much of what has made me get better at writing and acting so far as I've moved forward has been just experiencing my life. Like, there is mm -hmm. teaching, and you get as good a teacher as possible, and you listen to what they have to say. But I remember, like, when I was at Erupt, um, one of the teachers, Scott, like when he was there, mm -hmm. was like, you just need to go out and like live a bit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> go out and like find some compassion. Yeah. And that will help like the other stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, take some classes, but live some, there are some experiences you need to have. Yeah. Before that you go is forward. huge. Absolutely. That is, that's so huge. You have to live your life. It's not like, you're on hold and then you do only artist stuff, like artist stuff comes out of living life. Yeah, so yeah, that's great it's, advice. It's, it's very much like you can take all the classes and they will help, but they only mm -hmm. take you so far, like. Yep. Yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah, you gotta be out there. Especially with the world we are in. I would say now, but I'm like, I'm, there's definitely more than just current experiences where it's like, mm -hmm. there's enough of the world where stuff's always going on where it's like, get out there and just like look at it because that way you can actually apply things to your classes. Mm -hmm. That's the extra homework you need to do. Right. Is to just be in your life. Right. Which is not bad homework, you know? <laughs> yeah. Gives you your ideas for, um, for things, you know, like just how, uh, like you were talking about, just uh, talking to people and reading articles and wondering, I wonder what it's like if so-and-so is talking to so-and-so, you know, it fuels a lot of your writing. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it definitely helps. Yeah. There are things I feel like that I'm starting to write now where I feel like I'm getting to a point now where I'm actually starting to write things that are that I feel are good nice. <laughs> story-wise. Like, I feel like I'm actually like, last year actually is when I started feeling like I was getting to that point where it's like, oh, like I've always kind of had my voice, but I'm actually getting to the point where I'm writing stories that actually mentally for me matter. And that uh -huh. like, I am nervous putting out. Yeah. And, but it's like, yeah, Definitely rather be nervous putting out something than be like, oh yeah, this is comfortable, this is safe. Yeah, this, this is, is safe. Don't the be safest safe. thing I can possibly do. <laughs> like I, I'm actually getting to a point where like the things I write actually matter because they are, they're not autobiographical, but they're personal. Mm -hmm. They're more the results of a person with life experiences now. Right. Also, the other, I guess the other piece of advice is also you are young and that is the time to be just kind of living stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, this is this is definitely the time to be living stuff. You're fairly young and you're coming to school like right out of high school and whatnot. Like don't put so much stock in your 20s, especially if you're going to write anything because it's like you're not going to, for the most part, it's very rare that anyone in their 20s writes anything that's super amazing. Mm -hmm. Unless you yeah. had a lot of life experience by that point, like right. there's exactly. a reason that most writers are in their thirties when they start out. <laughs> right. When they start really that that's so great that you feel like you're really honing in um to what you've been meaning to what you've been working towards all this time. You're really starting to feel like, oh, this is it. That's really exciting. Yeah, like I'm actually at the point where the things I write are things I'm like, yep, this is what I would put out and I'd be comfortable putting this out mm -hmm. even like 10 years from now I'd be able to go yeah 
I still stand by that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was that was smart. Anything that you anything that you would want to share that I didn't ask you? Anything I missed? Um there's currently a play I'm writing that I'm working on. Oh, what is it? Um, it's this play called Me from Vitality. I haven't figured out if I'm gonna change it to something else. Uh-huh. But it's like a lot of things, it's basically something I've come up with in the last year. Uh-huh. And um What's funny about it right now is that everything that I'm sort of talking about in the play is kind of happening now, and I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. This is... It's unfolding. I mean, <laughs> this is going to be a way easier show to pitch after this. It's amazing. Well. Wow. Yeah, you'll be able to promote this uh, new piece really easily. I love it. <laughs> Cool. Well, um, we're totally looking forward to, to this whole week of performances um, yes. on Facebook. It's going to be a blast. They're going to be at 7 o'clock Mountain Time on Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. And then we'll also put them on YouTube so they'll be available to anybody anytime. But um, awesome. thank you again thank you. for lending your talents. Thank you. I'm glad to do it. That's good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.